Connecticut Voice Out Loud is proudly sponsored by Middlesex Health. Welcome to Connecticut Voice Out Loud, a show that celebrates the people and allies in the LGBTQ plus community. I'm Pat Laurie, and today we're coming to you from Guilford. 2022 saw the return to the good old days with many people getting out and about to celebrate all of life's occasions in person again. New friendships, new opportunities, and many fulfilling their dreams of entrepreneurship, like Alicia, the owner of Bloom, a multi-concept gathering space in Westville focused on empowering the community. I wanted to truly work in my community for my community on behalf of my community. So Bloom was created out of this desire to share space with local artisans, to highlight local artisans, especially in the BIPOC and LGBTQ communities. And it was during a time where I think people needed to be reminded that we should celebrate every day and everyone. Health and wellness is something to celebrate all of the time, whether you're going to the gym or seeking out alternative therapies like Reiki. Integrative medicine is becoming very popular as a way to treat the whole person. Middlesex Health has just opened the Burris Center for Integrative Medicine and joining me today is Justin Drew. He's the director of Middlesex Health Cancer Center. Justin, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks so much for having me. Pleasure to be here. So let's talk a little bit about what is integrative medicine for those who don't know about it and who would be a good candidate for it? Sure. So integrative medicine is a form of support for patients or individuals, really, uh, that complements traditional medicine. So um, we make the distinction really between alternative medicine and complementary medicine. And complementary medicine supports the whole person, the mind, the body, and the spirit. And so integrative medicine uh, at the Burris Center focuses on integrating mind, body, and spirit uh, for overall wellness. So what kinds of treatments can someone expect to get there? So our, at the Burris Center for Integrative Medicine, we have a variety of treatment modalities. Uh, we have acupuncture, reflexology, Reiki, massage. We also have a behavioral health component, which is uh, we have an individual who specializes in integrating um, and supporting individuals who maybe have a chronic illness, like something like Crohn's or colitis or maybe diabetes, and the connection between anxiety uh, or depression and the impact on the physical body. So she specializes in doing complementary therapies um, to help to manage those things, because we know in medicine that um, our feelings and our emotions, our spirit, uh, do have an impact on the physical body. And so we have a variety of practitioners who can address different things depending on, on what you're looking for. Yeah, you know, Justin, this is just so exciting because I feel like in the past it was separate. It was like you go to your doctor to get treated medically and then you go to some alternative specialist to get another, another treatment, but now you are combining them and it's right there at Middlesex. And I think it's really gonna help a lot of people. What does it say? I mean, this really kind of, I suppose, speaks volumes uh, about Eastern medicine. Yeah, I think philosophically, we found here at Middlesex that we have a variety of uh, practitioners that work within our health system that recognize this connection between East, Eastern and Western medicine and the connection between mind, body, and spirit. Um, and so this project and this new space has allowed us um, to, to act on that vision that's, that's, I think, becoming, as you said at the very start, becoming more common in society. People oftentimes will get a diagnosis and one of the first things they'll do is they'll go to the internet and they'll look for ways to support that, alternative therapies. As I said, we, we try to do this in a complementary fashion through our own health system. And so it's exciting, I think, to be able to offer both types of support here at Middlesex Health. But have you seen a demand, especially since COVID? We have seen a demand since COVID. Um, actually, one of the things that's been really interesting since COVID was our acupuncturist uh, had come to me and mentioned that she had been treating individuals with long hauler COVID symptoms, which is uh, loss of taste, smell, brain fog, fatigue, lethargy. She was seeing some individuals come in for acupuncture and she was treating them uh, and found that she was able to relieve symptoms of the loss of taste or smell that's often associated. And so we did a little research study in our, in our program. By little, I mean a small number of patients, but it was done in a robust way. It through, went through our institutional review board. It was approved. It was done through all sanctioned ways of, of measuring taste and smell or validated tools. 
And so what we, show, what we showed through this research study was that she was effective in improving loss of taste and smell and brain fog for 100% of the patients that she treated through acupuncture. So this was a great example of uh, using acupuncture to treat something which you hear a lot about in society as a side effect of getting COVID. Um, and so these are the types of things that we hope to do in the future as well is to demonstrate um, through research as well um, that these types of modalities are beneficial. Uh, we've notified our primary care docs in our health system if they have patients with long hauler COVID, uh, that there may be therapies here that support their patients. And so we're excited about uh, doing being able to do research uh, in this space as well. What a great compliment to Middlesex Health. Thank you so much. So how do you think that this could specifically also help uh, LGBTQ patients? In the LGBTQ community, um, some of the additional stressors or challenges that may exist in everyday life, um, using those mod these modalities to connect um, to, the, to the feelings that exist, and whether it be anxiety or just a sort of a pit in your stomach or different stressors, um, these modalities are very helpful in, in recognizing those things and the connection to physical issues that may be presenting themselves, maybe headaches, it could be other things. Um, so I think it's really um, very beneficial for a broad uh, array. As I said earlier, I think really anybody can benefit from these modalities. So describe the center to me. What's the environment like? What's the feeling like? Is it sort of like the hospital or is it different? Yeah, it's quite a bit different, actually. We try to um, build it in a way that feels more like a spa. It has a more of a laid back kind of calming vibe to it. Uh, we specifically, generally when we build things here at the hospital, we have certain colors and certain standards we use architecturally. For this space, we threw all, all that out the window. We said, we want a space that does not feel like a doctor's office. We don't want it to feel like a physician's exam room. We want the space to be warm and welcoming and feel more like a spa in terms of the way we light it, in terms of the music that's there. Um, in terms of the physical layout. And so these were all architectural things that we considered uh, as we built this space to try to really have it be a calming environment from the moment you walk in the door. I'm not going anywhere. Are you kidding? There is work to be done. Goats don't milk themselves, you know. When I had cancer, people said I'd have to travel long distances for care. Not me. I'm not going anywhere. Cancer patients are getting groundbreaking treatment at Middlesex Health and second opinions from Mayo Clinic experts close to home. Look at that. Nice work, girls. You buy a house, you have a bathroom, a kitchen that needs some love. It can be overwhelming. Is this for you? Is this for your budget? This is the fun part. We help you get it right. So many parts and pieces coming together at once, and that's why you need somebody who does tile all the time. At Tile America, we like to make it fun. Tile America, amazing showrooms, insightful advice. And don't forget to check out our outlets in New Haven and West Hartford. There are many gay or lesbian or transgender children who are turned away from their home, turned away from their family. How do you get through this? You're the only, you're the only gay person in the world and also within 100 miles. We persevered. And we built a life, we built a life together. LGBTQ kids have no role models for that. If we can help them in any way, our story hopefully will be an inspiration to them. As we reflect back on 2022, let's take a look at some of the fascinating people and stories that made news. Winning the right to marry didn't happen overnight. Eight couples endured a long court battle to be able to say, I do. Correspondent Don Ennis caught up with one of these couples who's still rocking and rolling after 40 years. Welcome everybody to American Jukebox. I'm Garrett Stack here with you for the next couple of hours as we play the music of the baby boom generation. And on this edition of American Jukebox, we're going- When Garrett Stack isn't spinning songs of the baby boom generation, here on American Jukebox WMNR, He's at home with his husband, John. That's where they're reliving their history and Connecticut's. So we were one of the people that made marriage for same-sex couples possible in the state of Connecticut. Stack and his husband, John Anderson, are retired educators who joined seven other gay couples in 2004, suing the state for the right to marry. Their court battle dragged on for years 
but they won. We were finally able to get married after all the work with the courts, and we did. We had our official wedding here in the church in Woodbridge, in Woodbridge yeah. the United Church of Christ Congregational, and that was a uh, July 10th, 2009. Our Don Ennis sat down with the first transgender contestant to reach the Tournament of Champions. What prompted you to even try out for Jeopardy? Yeah, well, I've been watching it as long as I can remember. My parents watched it growing up. Um, and, you know, I, as I, I said on the show, I was, I was voted most likely to be on it in eighth grade. Um, you know, and I just like my, I, I know that I'm, I'm, you know, fortunate enough to have a mind that's, that's well suited for it. Like, you know, uh, pretty retentive memory things, things tend to stick with me. And, uh, yeah, so it just always was something that sort of felt like it was, it was going to happen someday. How does it feel to be quote unquote America's sweetheart? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard to like comprehend from, my perspective, right? Because like, I'm just, you know, I, I'm not a different person than I was before this. And I still like live the same place and like, you know, lie around and eat craft macaroni and cheese out of the pot and all this sort of thing. Um, and yeah, so it like, it doesn't seem like, uh, I, it should have been as much, you know, for, you know, for my, myself, it doesn't seem like this should have been such a thing, but I, I know that it has been, and I've, I've, I've heard that. Happy Pride Month from the Art Goats game in Hartford, Connecticut. I have very loved uh, people in the community and I support any initiative that allows people to be who they are and embrace life the way they are. Happy Pride Month! People are people. Love one, love all. The longest running LGBTQ themed radio program in America is produced in Hartford. Keith Brown has been hosting Gay Spirit Radio every week for more than 40 years. Keith's dedication to the community is the subject of a new documentary. Our Don Ennis talked with the host and filmmakers who chronicled what Keith calls the truth about our lives for a change. Pat, I'm here on the campus of the University of Hartford and it's here that Keith Brown has been talking about and making LGBTQ history on the radio. And it's here that a member of the class of 22 crossed paths with a longtime radio host and decided to tell his story and that of our community. Uh, good evening, uh, this is Gay Spirit, a program for the lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans community of the greater Hartford area. Yeah, so I'm starting a new project called Ethel Adams Studios. It's amazing when you think about 42 years of never missing a radio show every Thursday night. And I think oftentimes he's getting on a bicycle and trudging through whatever it is that's getting in his way to go from the West End over to this campus. That in itself, he's an, I'd say, an unsung hero of our community. My name is Dawn Gagliardi. I am on the Corrado Group at Caldwell Banker. I am a real estate agent and I work with both buyers and sellers. I currently live in West Hartford, Connecticut, which is actually where I grew up. I cover all of the greater Hartford area and all of Connecticut. I also have a great team of realtors and connections all throughout the country, so I can help people buy or sell a home anywhere in the country. I'm able to help my clients buy their perfect homes and sell their homes for top dollar. I'm not going anywhere. Are you kidding? There's work to be done. Goats don't milk themselves, you know. When I had cancer, people said I'd have to travel long distances for care. Not me. I'm not going anywhere. Cancer patients are getting groundbreaking treatment at Middlesex Health and second opinions from Mayo Clinic experts close to home. Look at that. Nice work, girls. You buy a house, you have a bathroom, a kitchen that needs some love. It can be overwhelming. Is this for you? Is this for your budget? This is the fun part. We help you get it right. So many parts and pieces coming together at once. And that's why you need somebody who does tile all the time. At Tile America, we like to make it fun. Tile America, amazing showrooms, insightful advice. And don't forget to check out our outlets in New Haven and West Hartford. Let's take a look back now at some of the important health stories that took center stage in 2022. 
from speech therapy and vocal retraining to helping transitioning employees. The transition was very easy at home. I knew like my family would be supportive, things like that. Um, at work, I was a little bit apprehensive. Kelly joined MH Pride, which is Middlesex Health's employee resource group, which is our first ERG. He came to us to say that he was transitioning and we started to look at the support that the hospital was giving to transitioning and transitioned employees. So even though we we're an inclusive environment, I didn't know how to go about it because in CT we work with many departments. We work with, you know, we have a bunch of departments within our department. So knowing that I work with so many people, I didn't want to go up and to every person and be like, hi, I'm transgender. And like, these are my pronouns, you know, things like that. And we put our heads down as a group and started to plug away at how do we make the environment here at Middlesex Health very friendly, um, not so much friendly, but how, how do we make that transition process as easy as possible? So tell me, what is it like for someone going through a transition? How does the voice come into play? So a lot of my patients tell me that that's one of the, the biggest factors in their transition um, because ultimately um, they might end up transitioning uh, with their appearance and they might look a certain way, but then a lot of pain patients will tell me that their voice kind of outs them, right? So um, as soon as people hear them start talking, they realize right away that they're transgender, which can be a really uncomfortable experience for people. Um, so my goal is that everyone feels more comfortable with their voice through working with them. Can it be confusing if you're a trans man or a trans woman to know what kind of cancer screening you should get? Absolutely. It might, um, what it boils down to is being really simple, actually, um, but, but individuals might be confused. They might, um, you know, we talked a little bit about barriers. They, they might be um, reluctant to come in. Often cancer screenings can be highly genderized, you know, so we, we talk about breast cancer screening among women, everything is pink. Um, so if you're presenting male, um, but really need that, that mammogram, that might be extra uncomfortable for you. Um, but really the, the bottom line is that if you have it, screen it. Um, so that's really the, the, the simple message here. If you have breast tissue, it should be screened uh, for breast cancer. If you still have a cervix, it should be screened for cervical cancer, um, you know, and, and so on and so forth. At Middlesex Health, we're doing more to make healthcare better for you, with more personal attention to get you back to your best, and more of today's most innovative, life-saving treatments. We're bringing more second chances to communities throughout Central Connecticut and the Shoreline, and finding more ways to treat every member of your family like a member of ours. Together, it all adds up to the new Middlesex Health, today's smarter choice for care. If you buy a house, do you have a bathroom, a kitchen that needs some love? It can be overwhelming. Is this for you? Is this for your budget? This is the fun part. We help you get it right. So many parts and pieces coming together at once, and that's why you need somebody who does tile all the time. At Tile America, we like to make it fun. Tile America, amazing showrooms, insightful advice. And don't forget to check out our outlets in New Haven and West Hartford. There are many gay or lesbian or transgender children who are turned away from their home, turned away from their family. How do you get through this? You're the only, you're the only gay person in the world and also within 100 miles. We persevered and we built a life. We built a life together. LGBTQ kids have no role models for that. If we can help them in any way, our story hopefully will be an inspiration to them. At the inaugural Connecticut Voice Awards, we've traded the red carpet for a lavender one to match the bold and visionary leaders that will proudly be here tonight to support the LGBTQ plus community. Let's meet some of them. This is a huge night for the LGBTQ plus population. Well, this is something we've been dreaming of doing since I came on board over a year ago to honor the best and the brightest in Connecticut who really are beacons of light and hope and inspiration for the LGBTQ plus communities in Connecticut. Tell me what this night means to you. It means so much. Um, all my hard work has paid off and, you know, I'm, I'm just going to keep doing what I've been doing. I'm winning the Youth Award. What award are you winning tonight? 
I'm winning the Unsung Hero Award um, for those that are doing a lot of advocacy in the community. This is a night of celebration and it makes me feel great, so good, that we're finally able to take these leaders in our community and just say thank you. Thank you for everything that we've done. This Proud Academy will be the first school of its kind in Connecticut for LGBTQ youth to follow Harvey Milk, the Alliance, and Magic City Acceptance Academy in Connecticut. Here we come. It's been a long time since I've been surrounded by my people, and this has been tonic, and I'm so glad to be here uh, photographing this event. I feel so fortunate to be here with like-minded people. Like, these are my people who feel the same way that I do about the LGBTQ community. What we're doing tonight is we're sending a message to everyone who's opposed to people being themselves. If you don't like trans people, then you shouldn't change genders. If you don't think gay people should get married, then don't get gay married. But we have a right to be who we are, just to live and let live. And that's what we're doing tonight, and we're gonna live. We're gonna dance, we're gonna party. Do you feel the love in this room tonight? Absolutely, absolutely. It's it's so nice to be in a place where you know that um, everyone is loved, everybody is, is welcome to hear their authentic selves. Any opportunity to celebrate a community that doesn't get its full due is a special and important opportunity. But for us, being musical storytellers tonight, we have an opportunity to highlight voices from the LGBTQ plus community that um, give us all a reason to shout and smile. So tonight we're gonna tw tell 12 remarkable stories of people that are doing such incredible work in and around the LGBTQ plus community. This is a great event to put ourselves out there, say clearly that we're open and all of God's children are welcome in any one of our churches. I was involved when Connecticut Voice Magazine first got started. I was on the advisory panel and it felt so cool to be like, you know, where do we even begin? There's so much to work with in this state and so many people doing great things. So I was really honored to be a part of how this, how this whole thing got started. And now to be a part of it uh, to celebrate, I just couldn't say no. You know, this is a significant, and they make huge contributions to the to make our state a great place to live, right? So we're here to celebrate that tonight. U.S. Congresswoman Rosa DeLauro has been a tremendous supporter of the community. She earned the Government and Service Award for her contributions. Well, congratulations for this award. Thank you. I really am so honored. I'm really touched, you know, by by the recognition. Yeah, tell me a little bit about why this event is important to Connecticut. Well, I, I think, first of all, Connecticut is one of the leading nations and leading states in the country that uh, really recognizes diversity and inclusion and has, has been really in the vanguard of making sure that the rights of the LGBTQ plus community are safeguarded. Senator Blumenthal, thank you so much for being a part of this. Why is this an important night for Connecticut? I think it's an important night for Connecticut because Connecticut voice is coming of age. It has become a force in the state as a voice for not only a community, but really for values and for inclusion, equality. And at this point in our history, let's be very blunt, that voice and those values are more important than ever because we are threatened as a nation. Our democracy is threatened and our fundamental freedoms are at risk. So a lot of the things that people come in with are anxiety, depression, uh, dysphoria, suicidal ideation, um, so we work on all that. When one decides to transition, it is quintessential someone in that position has a safe space. Dane is the person that granted me that safe space. I was able to contact him, I was able to start therapy with him. And he made it possible for me to explore myself and to come to terms with the fact that, yes, I am trans. And I was able to make that decision on my own because of that safe space that he provided. My inspiration came from my own experience and how people in my life surrounded me and lifted me up in my hardest times. And I found that community was a lifesaver. And so, I continue to see the need for people um, to find their, yeah, to find their community to really 
help support them and make them feel seen and make them feel loved. So I, I love bringing people together. It's a huge passion of mine. I got the idea from seeing what they had done in, in neighboring towns, and I wanted the similar, the same thing in Avon. When I went before the town council, they voted it down three to two, saying that it was against the town charter to have anything on public property. After the idea was turned down, if it wasn't for town council member Dan Paul Hamus, um, he, he emailed me and asked me if I wanted to design an Avon Cares lawn sign that we could sell and then all proceeds would go to uh, these equity clubs at my school. Middlesex is a leader in this community because we have two superpowers. The first is we have our patients. Our patients help us be better providers and a better organization every day. The other is our employees. We have many, many employees who volunteer to do this work, who educate themselves, and who make a commitment to making our organization better for the better of our community. It's always concerning to me when there's a barrier to care for anybody, regardless of their health issue, um, and specifically for trans people. There's absolutely a war going on where some places are trying to inappropriately and unnecessarily add barriers to, to life-saving and, and truly medically necessary health care. When we first met Kai Shapley in 2016, she was just about to start kindergarten. How many I can carry is how many I can take out. And was at the center of a firestorm in Pearland ISD, where district leaders decided Kai would have to use the boys' bathroom. Please understand, I'm not fighting about bathrooms. I'm fighting about her life. It was a battle the Shapleys would not win, and in 2018, the family moved to Austin. Well, it was just the safest little place. Um, that we could move to for Kai to, you know, have equal opportunities as all of her peers. Kai's story became national news and the subject of an Emmy Award winning documentary. Hello, hello. And last fall, Hollywood came calling. There was a spot open on the Babysitter's Club for a trans girl and asked if she wanted to play the part of Bailey. And so, Kai, what did you say to that? I said yes. Tell me, um, what does it feel to be like here tonight at the Connecticut Honors Awards? It's the first time we're having this event. Well, it feels really awesome. Everybody looks so beautiful and pretty, and I'm glad I get to wear my dress. And, um, I mean, it's exciting, really. But I hope I can share my story to the others here so that they'll want to know more about kids like me. As we wrap up another year, what are you most looking forward to? More travel? A new job? Falling in love? Whatever it is, I hope you go for it. See your friends, see your family, do what makes you happy. That's what I try to do every single day. Look for something that makes you smile. Happy, happy holidays, holidays from Bespoke, Bespoke Home, Home in Brantford. Brantford. Three words for the new year. Peace, prosperity, passion. If you'd like to see all of our shows in their entirety, you can visit ctvoice.com. I'm Pat Laurie. Thanks for watching and keep spreading joy and happiness in our world.